Recently, Russell Wilson just became the highest paid player in NFL history. Just another accolade to add on to a career full of them. In just seven years in the league, he's been to two Super Bowls, won one, six Pro Bowls, led the league in passer rating and passing touchdowns. But at the 2012 quarterback loaded draft, no one believed in Russell, and quarterback needy teams passed on him. Yet, he proved everyone wrong and might go down as the best quarterback taken in the 2012 NFL Draft. Now, in today's video, I wanted to go over who the five quarterbacks are who were taken before Wilson, and how their careers turned out. Now, let's kick this off with why Russell Wilson fell to the Seahawks at the 75th overall pick in the third round. This is for some of the same reasons as to why Drew Brees fell, their lack of height. Currently, Russell was the shortest quarterback in the NFL at 5'11", and some scouts said he would have been a first round pick had he been a few inches taller. But even though he lacked stature, it's still somewhat shocking that Russell fell that far. Even though he had that transfer situation his senior year from NC State to Wisconsin, he still led the entire nation in passer rating, had one of the best arms in the entire draft, had played in pro style offenses, demonstrated a high football IQ, was an extremely mobile quarterback, and had shown great character. Now, before we take a look at the five quarterbacks taken before Wilson, I would like to preface this by saying that although not all these guys went on to become stars like Russell, three out of five of them are still in the league, and this might be one of the most talented quarterback drafts in recent memory, considering that there were two guys taken after Russell who turned out to be pretty good. Alright, now let's start this off with the Indianapolis Colts who at number one selected the consensus top pick, Andrew Luck out of Stanford. This is the only pick that was challenging to reach a conclusion on. Now sure, Luck might not have the wins and overall team success of Russell, but this can be attributed to his shoulder injuries, playing on some pretty mediocre Colts teams, and having to play in a conference with the Patriots. Numbers wise, their averages since they've entered the league have been incredible. Only accounting for years that they played all 16 games, Luck has averaged a 61% completion percentage, 4,387 passing yards, 31 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. Wilson, on the other hand, has averaged 64.2% completion percentage, 3,660 yards, 28 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. Now, looking at these numbers, it's obvious that although Luck put up higher totals, Wilson is far superior in efficiency and playing turnover-free football. Another aspect is each of these quarterbacks rushing abilities. Once again, going off of averages and years that they played in all 16 games, Luck has averaged 4.4 yards an attempt for 263 yards, 3 touchdowns, and 19 first downs. Wilson on the other end has averaged 5.7 yards an attempt for 521 yards, 2 touchdowns, and 30 first downs. Here it's easy to see that Wilson is the far superior rushing quarterback. The final side to this that can't be understated is health. So far, Russell Wilson has been the NFL's Iron Man, starting 112 out of 112 possible games. He's never as much missed a single start in his entire seven-year career. Luck, on the other hand, has had major health concerns, especially in recent years, missing 28 games between 2015 and 2017. And to add insult to injury, Luck's injuries have been to his throwing shoulder, the most vital part on a quarterback's body. Now, although Wilson is a more efficient, mobile, and healthier quarterback, the Colts still probably would have taken luck. At the time, they had just moved on from Peyton Manning and were looking for a seamless transition and decided to go with the closest thing they could get to the Sheriff, a tall, intelligent, clean-cut, prototypical pocket passer to run the system they used with Peyton. And I mean, let's be honest, Luck still had a great career so far. When he's healthy, he's been dominant in every statistical category and has taken some pretty mediocre Colts teams on deep playoff runs. And now that he's once again healthy and has some of the best teams of his career, I expect him and the Colts to make another deep playoff run this year, so I still think the Colts go luck at number one overall. Now for the second quarterback taken, the infamous Robert Griffin III, taken by the Redskins with the second overall pick. Now although hindsight is 2020, and given another chance the Skins would have definitely taken Wilson, they definitely made the correct choice at the time. RG3 was a beast at Baylor, putting together three solid years until he took the nation over during his senior season in 2011. That year, Griffin passed for 4,293 yards, 37 touchdowns, and only 6 interceptions. He also rushed for 699 yards and 10 touchdowns. This incredible stat line led to him beating out Andrew Luck and Trent Richardson for the 2011 Heisman. 
It's easy to see why Griffin went second overall. The guy had it all, size, speed, athleticism, high football IQ, and could make any throw on the field. Going to the draft, he was even compared to a Matthew Stafford on Michael Vick's legs. The only reason that Griffin didn't go number one overall was due to how pro ready luck was, but unfortunately, it just didn't work out for RG3. During his rookie year, RG3 took the NFL by storm, leading the lowly Redskins to the playoffs and won NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. But little do we know that this was the beginning of the end. In a late season game against the Ravens, RG3 suffered an LCL sprain that he was rushed back from and ended up causing irreversible damage to his knees against the Seahawks in the playoffs. Following these injuries, Griffin was never the same player as he had lost that dynamic rushing ability. In the following years, Griffin was consistently injured, leading to his physical abilities diminishing. By 2015, the physical toll on Griffin's body had led to him being a shell of his former self, and he had been demoted all the way to a safety on the scout team. Kirk Cousins was now the new starting quarterback, and in 2016, he was released by the Redskins. And after a short stint with the Browns, he became the backup quarterback for the Ravens. A long fall from grace from a previous number two overall pick. Now, it's easy to look back and say that the Redskins should have taken Wilson, but who knows? Considering that they're both similar players, and Russell definitely would have been running in their system, he easily could have gotten hurt. But it's still a safe bet to say that given a second chance, the Skins would have taken Wilson. Now for a third quarterback taken before Russell, Ryan Tannehill at number 8 overall by the Miami Dolphins. This is the first pick where there actually should have been a legitimate conversation for Wilson. Tannehill was a complete reach here. As one of the Ross quarterbacks in the draft, he played receiver his first two years at Texas A&M. During his junior season, he made a transition to quarterback, and he'd given mixed results, going in 13-7 and as a starter with a 42-21 to touchdown to interception ratio. All he'd been so far was a mediocre quarterback. But some scouts did see potential in him, and Mike Mayock even said, I don't think he's ready to be a heavy contributor this year, and I watched every throw he made on tape this year. All the outbreaking routes are phenomenal. So clearly Tannehill was viewed as a raw prospect, but some thought the potential was there. So far in Tannehill's career, it's been pretty up and down. He started off on the rise, improving his numbers every year between 2012 and 2014. But he peaked in 2014 when he threw for 4,045 yards, 27 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Since then, he's been on the downturn, constantly being injured, and when he hasn't been hurt, he's performed poorly, leading to the Dolphins moving on from this offseason when they traded him to the Titans. If the Dolphins had a second chance, they absolutely would have taken Wilson. Now for the fourth quarterback taken for Wilson. Brandon Whedon is the 22nd overall pick in the first round. Alright, I want to be honest here. I can see what the other teams are thinking with their picks, but with this one, I'm dumbfounded. Now sure, Brandon played pretty well at Oklahoma State, especially in his junior and senior seasons, where he combined for 9,004 yards, 71 touchdowns, and 26 interceptions. But he still had some knocks on him coming into the draft, including playing in a simple offensive system, a lack of athleticism, and the cherry on top being that he was 28 years old on the day of the draft, the oldest first round pick in NFL history. So far, his career has just been like almost every other quarterback drafted by Cleveland, a complete mess. After two terrible years in Cleveland, he was promptly cut. Following this, he's been a journeyman, playing on and off for the Cowboys, Texans, and Titans, and at the moment, he's a free agent. Now, for the final quarterback taken before Russell, Brock Osweiler with the 57th pick in the second round, the fifth quarterback taken in the 2012 NFL Draft. Brock is a unique case. Coming out of Arizona State, the main knock against him was that he had a poor on-field judgment leading to lots of turnovers, but he could be a good game manager, and so far this has been pretty true. After Brock backed up Manning for three years in Denver, he finally got the chance to play in 2015 after Manning was hurt. Starting weeks 11 through 17, Osweiler went 5-2 in relief, and would finish the year with a 61.8 completion percentage, 1,967 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. Although he would get benched in week 17 for Manning and was the backup for the playoffs, he would ultimately get a Super Bowl ring. In the following offseason, Brock turned his 2015 performance into a four-year, $72 million contract with $37 million guaranteed from the Houston Texans. In his only year in Houston, he threw for 2,957 yards, 15 touchdowns, to 16 interceptions, solidifying himself as one of the biggest free agency busts in NFL history. He had played so bad, the Texans gave up the second round pick just so that they could send him and his cap hit to the Browns. 
Since his Houston days, Brock's played sparingly for the Broncos and Dolphins, and is currently a free agent. After seeing the pre-draft analysis, it's fair to say that the only reason Osweiler was taken over Wilson is because of his height. Now imagine if John Elway could actually draft. The 2015 Broncos team could have been legendary with Wilson at the helm. Now that we've seen all the quarterbacks taken before Russ, it's easy to say that every team except the Colts would have taken Russell over their guy. But would Russell really have turned out the same had another one of these franchises taken him? I mean, let's be honest here. Seattle was a great fit. He inherited the NFL's best defense to bail him out in close games, a Hall of Fame running back, and having solid receivers such as Jermaine Kerr, Sidney Rice, and Doug Baldwin certainly doesn't hurt. And as a person, Russell Wilson just fit well in Seattle, with his positive, uplifting personality. Seeing as Russell Wilson has blossomed from an undersized slept on quarterback to a perennial Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion, and majority of his contemporaries taken before him, who fit the stereotypical quarterback mold that failed, it highlights the lesson that NFL executives should focus less on if the player looks like a quarterback and more if he can play like one.